This is ABC, Allen Broadcasting Company from London. Today, let's discuss the book Make It Stick. The book uh, revolves around the topics on how to improve your studies and how to develop good memory. So, let's see how few points that the book discusses. First, I would like to discuss is about mastery and fluency. How to be a master on what you have studied instead of just being fluent in it. Second is active retrieval. That is, you're trying to retrieve or you're trying to challenge yourself to bring back what you have studied. Third is in the leave practice where you're mixing up different types of practice. And fourth, elaboration where you elaborate what you have studied so far. So now coming to mastery versus fluency, well, always a person will be uh, will be better when he's master of a topic more than if he's fluent in the topic. Similarly, if you are the master of some topic, you truly understand what the topic or subject is. Whereas if you are just fluent, you just are familiar with it. Why people become are people more fluent than master master in that topic is because they just cram up whatever they're studying. They they just reread and re-highlight and they just feel that they're fluent. We remember what I had discussed earlier. There's fluency illusion. They they feel that they are the master, but after after a certain point of time, they uh, they realize it's just an illusion that they knew it and they cannot recall what they have studied so uh th that is fluency so you are supposed to be master on what you t what you have studied so you truly understand what you have studied and then that even gets uh, dissolved into your unconscious mind so it you can use it later on so that is a uh, once you're a master when your memory develops you have more control on the knowledge or on the topic so how can you become uh, the master of what you have learned or what you are learning? For that, let's few, follow a few points. There are uh, one is active retrieval, interleaf practice, and elaboration. Now, what do you mean by active re retrieval? Well, uh, if you remember what I have told earlier, yes, the same thing is to do quiz and recall. Whatever you have studied, you close the book. You challenge yourself to do it. Do the full uh, quest, uh, quiz. Testing yourself or um, if you're doing a math problem, you close the book and you try to do it by yourself instead of rereading the problem. So you automatically you're putting yourself in a difficult position and uh, you will be testing your memory and you will realize that you have missed few parts of it or something. So when you keep testing yourself, you're quizzing yourself, you automatically you you become on the master. You start to recall and uh, read uh, rethink it, and it becomes a permanent memory for you. Third one is interleave practices. Now, uh, what do you mean by interleave practice? Well, uh, let me uh, tell you some research. What people uh, result of our research? So, uh, a set of batsmen were taken, and a few batsmen were given. Uh, a bit of fastballs, then a bit of spin balls, and and kept on repeating in a certain number of units. So the batsman knew what type of ball is going to come. Whereas another set of batsmen were given mix. They were given fastball, spin ball, and confusing. So it was no order was maintained. And the research found out that the batsmen who got the regular type of balls and they knew about the what type of ball they are going to face they were not able to assist a normal batsman but whereas uh, the batsmen who got different types of bat balling spin fast and that kept them challenged because they had to think they had to keep the mindset for anything so what happened is uh, they, they had a different challenges and this helped them to become a better batsman over the others Similarly, when you're studying, you try to interleave. You re, uh, you read something. You try to write it down. Maybe uh, just uh, change the way you're sitting. Uh, so you try to bring in different practices, uh, mixing it up. You can watch some videos or trying to explain it in some other words, something like that. So by then you're mixing it up. You mix different practices. You put yourself into different difficulty modes. So you're challenging yourself again. And then this, and you know the word practice. Practice is the main reason or the main uh, effort you have to do to become the best. So if you keep on practicing with different, different uh, methods, you space it out with your equal resting and uh, maximum effort, 
you will automatically gain more mastery in it. So you are interleave uh, better prior practices to become the master of it. Fourth point is elaboration. Uh, well, elaboration by means is to describe in your own words. Well, after a lecture or you will read something or something like that, instead of uh, going through the notes or something, the better thing is to just describe whatever you studied in your own words, whatever you remember. You keep testing yourself. Yeah, okay, this topic is this, all these topics were discussed, like that. And then automatically you can connect it to similar topics. So you link whatever you have studied before and whatever the new information is. Once you form the link, it will be easier for you to remember when you need it. Another aspect of elaboration is to teach. Well, teaching the best way because you automatically do active retrieval. You are retrieving whatever you try to study and you are interleave. So teaching is a part of interleave because you, it's a different practice to learn and you are challenging yourself because it's very hard to teach someone. So. This teaching is in a part of elaboration where you, you can teach yourself, you can teach uh, your parents or your relatives or even if you teach some your laptop, you can just teach a laptop. The liveless thing also doesn't matter. I have told earlier, the best way to teach is to teach someone like as if they are 5 years old because you have to tell it to the basic, most understanding format. So in such a way, you will start teaching, you will be making your brain work more make you more of a master in it. So let's just round up what uh, we have said today that is mastery. We need to have mastery over what you have studied instead of being just fluent where if you are fluent you actually forget after some point of time. So do not just keep rereading or cramming and highlighting because it's not worth the time. Instead of that just close your book, try quizzing yourself, try testing it out, retrieve whatever you are trying to study and then you, when you realize you have missed out something, go back, learn it and again try to quiz yourself. Then you will automatically become master in it. Then have different practices. Try to bring in some change. Challenge yourself. Put yourself in a bit of difficulty so that you put in more effort. Then you space it out with the rest and a higher effort. So then you, you have that continuity. Fourth is elaboration where you try to elaborate whatever you have studied in your own words and you connect it with similar points and this allows you to develop a, a better understanding or a better structure in your brain. And teaching is the best way because it actually brings in all the things. You, unless you are a master you cannot teach. So if you try to teach you automatically gain the mastery knowledge. You keep actively retrieving whatever you studied. It's another type of practice when you're mixing it out, when you're teaching and you elaborate whatever you studied. So teaching is a very important factor if you want to learn. Because if you if you have learned really well, you would be able to teach also very well. Uh, I would like to end this video by saying that everything is about your mindset. If you feel you want to do it, if you feel you're confident, so if you want to do it, you keep that mindset and you move forward, you try to study, you automatically will do it better because you, you, you feel more comfortable. Thank you for watching. Keep your mindset positive and have a great day.